Hi, and welcome into the eighth video in our PowerShell 7.2 for Intermediate series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to parse XML files, and also we're going to take a look at how to generate XML files using PowerShell and also how to import those files. Um, so one key thing to note is PowerShell does have a commandlet called import CLI XML. Um, so we're going to see how to use that. Um, but for the most part, if you are going to be using your own generated XML file, either from your HR application or an XML file that you've written yourself, similar to this one here that I've created um, for a list of employees, uh, you won't be able to use that commandlet. So I'm going to show you guys how you would import these types of XML files into your PowerShell scripts. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started here. So the first thing we're always going to have to do, of course, is create our variable with our file path. So let's create a variable called XML file path. And we are going to make that equal to our XML file path here. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to import this data as an XML data type. So what we can actually do is do an open and close square brackets and put the letters XML in our square brackets. And then we're going to create a variable called XML data. And we're going to make that equal to get content. And we are going to pass in our XML file path as the path. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take a look at what that looks like once we have that imported here. So let's just run all of this. So what we actually have is an XML object here. So we have our XML type and our employees object. So if we go into this XML here, this is our XML version. This is a required line for a valid XML file. And then what we have is we have an object called employees. And then in employees, we actually have an object called employee, which has all of our employee details. And we have four employees in this file here. So what we can actually do is we can actually do a dot notation. So XML file, uh, XML data dot employees. And then we can actually say dot employee. And if we actually just run that here, we actually get all of our employee data. Now, what I would do is I would then store this into a employee data variable. And then what we can do with that is do a for each employee in employee data, open and close curly brackets. And we can actually just run this all together right away. As we know, this will actually give us our dot notation on the employee object. And as you can see, we can actually see that we have our DOB, which is date of birth, employee ID, um, first name, uh, there should also be a last name as well and a title. Uh, so what we can actually do here is just do a write output and we can do employee and then we can actually put employee dot employee ID as name of and then we can put the employee dot first name. And then we can go ahead and we can actually put the employee dot last name here. And if we actually run this through on the for each loop, uh, let me actually just accidentally created a whole bunch of these here. All right, there we are. So we actually have all of our employee data printed on the screen here. We have our employee IDs and then we have our names. So you would actually be able to use this data in this loop and loop through all the employee data, compare it to your active directory or compare it to another file and detect if you have like any new employees or employees that should be removed from your system. Or if one of them has changed names, you can detect all that information right there. So again, this would be for um, your own generated XML files, this is the way that you would treat them. You would treat them using the get content, and then you would make sure that you always create that variable type with XML. Uh, and this way it's gonna create that object for you. Now, 
another very uh, good way to generate or import XML files in PowerShell is the CLI XML. Now, if you try to use the import uh, CLI XML on a custom data, you will get an error. So let's actually, let's test that out here. Um, so let's do CLI data and let's make that equal to import dash CLI XML. And then let's try to pass in our XML file path here. If we try to run this here, we will actually see that the element ob with namespace, and then it provides us a Microsoft schema was not found. So it does actually expect very specific object style, um, but let's actually see how we can use the import and export CLI XML. So one of the ways that we could actually use it is let's say you wanted to generate a XML of all the services on your computer. So you can do a get service. And then what we could do is do an export CLI XML and provide our path here. So let me just provide a path here for me, which is gonna be C scripts uh, and then intermediate tutorials. And then we are doing the XML files and we're gonna name it test export.xml. So if we actually run this here and we actually look at our XML file, now, as you can see, this looks a lot different compared to our XML file that I created myself. Um, but this is actually is all created for me by PowerShell. Like I didn't have to put anything in there. There's that line that it expects right away. And what this does, this actually stores the different data types as well that it is. So we can actually see that it is storing system.service.servicecontroller which is the actual type of the object that we've created. So what actually happens here is if we just do a get service again, and we pipe that to get member, which we've seen before in previous videos, we will see if I just expand this out here, we will see that it gives us a type name of system.service.servicecontroller startup type, and then we have all of our properties and methods, of course, that we can perform with those. But now if we actually go ahead and create a variable here called service data, and we actually make this equal import dash CLI XML, and then we provide it the path, and let's just provide it the path here to our XML data that we've just created. And we actually import this. And let's just take a look at it real quick first before we actually inspect it. Um, so as we can see, we can actually see all the services here. Um, we can see all the different um, status name and display name. So it actually kept all that information for us. And actually, if we even do a get dash member on it, we will actually see that it is a deserialized system.service.service controller. So it actually kept its data type. Uh, so it, it is still a system.service.service controller data type. Uh, so we can actually do a lot of information with that. It's definitely a lot better than just storing it in a CSV file, although CSV files do work. Um, another really great thing that you can do with import CLI XML as we've seen in one of the other videos that I'm actually going to put a link to that video um, in the description down below, but you can actually use the export and import CLI XML to store secure strings. Now, of course, there are other ways to store passwords, but this is a way to store a password that will be locked to a machine and to a user. Um, and then this way you can not have plain text in your scripts. If you do anything, at least it's better than putting it into plain text. Of course, you can use uh, secret faults as well uh, that provide a little bit of an extra layer. Um, but if you're going to do the pure basic, that would be the best bet instead of just putting it in plain text in your scripts, which would obviously not be recommended. So there are a lot of uses for this import and export. CLI XML, like I said, I'll be putting that description to that video. Um, 
I'll be putting the link in the description for that video because I think that is a very useful video where you can use this functionality. So hopefully that kind of helps you guys use XML files in your PowerShell scripts. Uh, they're great for storing configurations just like the JSON files are um, or storing data like the JSON files and CSV files. It gives you a little bit more flexibility because you can create um, object types similar to JSON, uh, which gives you a little bit more benefit compared to a CSV file. JSON and XML are definitely very useful, um, but CSV files are useful because you can open them in Excel and you can actually share them with the non-tech people in your group. So hopefully that helps. If you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. If it's something specific, I will try to answer you directly. If it's something a little bit more generic that a lot of people can benefit from, I will try to create a video for it. Um, also be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.